Dirk, um, you know, we hear about perhaps oil not getting hit uh, as we await Israel's response here, but how much of a risk is it? Yeah, very good question. Um, I think the first take of the market after the weekend was it will probably not escalate, uh, at least not in a way that puts any oil production at risk and that puts uh, you know the, the real risk of, of war between Iran and Israel on the table. And, uh, and so the market relaxed a little bit. And I think uh, that is the right view. And not the least because it was clearly demonstrated to us how important the U.S. really is for the defense of Israel. And, uh, and the U.S., of course, has absolutely no interest uh, to let this thing escalate. So they will use all the leverage they do have to, to keep things at a fairly manageable uh, level. And that, of course, means, yes, you will not get an oil spike. Uh, while our oil status did upgrade the oil prices, it's, it's really just to around current levels while the, for the risk premium to stick with us for a longer time period. But we don't see this spike to 100 plus that would cause more damage. Now, it, it, the tails have increased, right? The risks clearly have increased. Um, if, uh, if uh, Netanyahu is basically uh, pushed by his coalition partners to, to take a more hardline view. But, um, but it's not our, our base case. We think we, we can actually avoid that. Well, even if we don't get a spike, does this risk in a way put a floor under oil? Um, yes. I mean, there are probably 4 to $5 of risk premium right now in oil. And, um, and that is higher than we would have thought some time ago. And that will probably stick with us at least for another quarter or two. In the end, uh, fundamentals will take over. In the end, it will all be about how much oil demand is rising, how much supply is rising, and so forth. And uh, we actually see oil coming off again, but probably only in Q3, when, uh, when things could have calmed uh, from, from current levels. And, um, and that is something we just have to live with for now, the, this risk premium in the oil price. You're, you're, you're very right about that. So Q3 is just a quarter away from Q4. And then we're starting to talk mm -hmm. about weather again, right, as an impact on energy. Uh, so how much, how much room for volatility is there in that quarter uh, before we start really talking about weather and nat gas and things? Yeah. I mean, I, I think we, we will probably just stick around current levels unless there really is a big intensification uh, between Israel and, and Iran. I mean, there could always be other issues with oil markets. You know, it's not just one conflict that can drive up oil prices. There are many of those. Uh, and, uh, and so there, there's always in the oil market, I feel, the, the unexpected happens. But, um, but you know, we, we already moved quite a bit. We priced in a fairly severe situation. And, and I think we are, we are fine for now. Uh, so from here, you would need an additional shock. And those things are obviously very hard to forecast. Oil is a, is a volatile beast, of course, and anything can happen. But, but we, are, we are confident that we are in the right range for now and have priced a sufficient amount of risk. Uh, how, how does natural gas look then at the same time, given that it also plays into some of these conflict narratives, probably more Russia-Ukraine? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I think the important thing to realize, though, is that from a local macro perspective, uh, especially when it comes to the U.S., oil just matters a lot more because the natural gas market has become more international um, through, uh, through the liquefied, liquefied gas. But it's, it's still the case that it's a more regional market. And so to impact the U.S., it's really all about the oil and that gas will play a second fiddle. Um, and, and so I think the, the market rightly focuses on, on what this conflict means for oil uh, first and foremost.